On today's show, we're going to get our first look at the Dremel DigiLab 3D45. Stay tuned. Hey, welcome to The First Layer. My name is Richard Cleveland. I'm your host here twice a week, every Wednesday, and our live stream on Saturday nights at 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. If you're new here, this is a show that explores the world of 3D printing, and today is no different. Today we are having a look at the Dremel DigiLab 3D45. This is uh, one of the higher-end offerings from Dremel. And we're going to get a look at it. We're going to talk a little bit about how it prints. We'll go through some of the pros and cons of it as well. But if you are new here, please go ahead, hit that subscribe button down at the bottom of the screen there. And uh, also hit that bell so you get notified every time that we do a brand new episode so you don't miss a thing. Let's get right into our look at this Dremel uh, DigiLab Idea Maker. Well, let, where do I start? Um, let's start with the print quality. The print quality that comes off this thing is is actually pretty good. Um, you do have to download uh, currently the slicer for the DigiLab. Uh, however, that slicer looks like a very old version of Cura. So, um, is it a good product? Um, yeah, I suppose. Um, does it work? Yes, it does. Is it set up for the Dremel DigiLab? Yes, it is. Um, can you use newer versions of the software to uh, with the DigiLab? Now, my experience is I have not been able to install the DigiLab on the latest version of Cura, nor have I been able to uh, install the DigiLab uh, profile into Simplify 3D. So, not really. How does it handle filament? Well, DigiLab and Dremel um, have their own version of filament and they would like to sell you their own version. They do say that you can use third-party filaments in this machine. It's not easy to do that. Um, let's start with the print quality. I'm gonna just move cameras here. So here we can see a bust of Thanos. Now this was um, Thanos that I went ahead and sliced and printed. Uh, I used the gold filament that uh, Dremel had sent out for us to have uh, to play with. Um, he came out pretty good. Uh, the only problem was now I sliced this with their version of the of the slicer um, and. In all honesty, it does have a few imperfections on the back, but the print quality is actually pretty nice. Um, you can see it there. I don't know how well that's showing up on screen, but let me tell you, the print quality is pretty good. And that gold luster inside the filament really makes it look uh, spectacular. I don't think I'll do much with this other than go back and sand off some of those nubs. Now, this was a file that I sliced. Let's get on to another file. This lion's head, this is a file that comes that came on the Dremel already pre-sliced using their filament again. Uh, looks really, really nice. Um, no flaws in this whatsoever. Didn't have any real overhangs, so it didn't use any support material. It printed actually quite beautifully. Um, so that's one of theirs. Here's a, the first one that I printed, and this is the frog. Uh, many of you guys have seen this frog model before. Um, this frog came out beautiful. It's smooth. It, you, it, the luster is gorgeous. Um, it stuck to the bed well. Everything stuck well. Now, for the bad part. I tried printing one of their files, sliced, um, with the orange PLA. This is fluorescent orange from Kodak. Um, this is their PLA+. Plus. You can see that it did not complete. Um, the surface detail is really bad. Uh, it started to under extrude. It really was not a very good uh, model all around. Let me have a look, see, and see if I can get you guys an over the shoulder. Maybe that'll look better. We cut to the over the shoulder. No, not really. Um, but you, 
there is quite a bit of detail missing here. Um, and it just overall, it's just a bad, bad print. Um, so this was using the, uh, again, the Kodak orange filament, um, their orange or their fluorescent orange filament um, didn't do very well in the printer at all. It eventually just stopped printing and told me that the print had finished and while it didn't. Now, this is a Thanos that I got off of Thingiverse. And many of you have probably seen this. This is the Thanos in Throne. Now you can see he looks like he's a little decapitated there. Well, he is. This had a severe layer shift uh, in it and did not print very well. You can see that there's parts of um, support material. This was sliced with the support, the, the tree support that were already on it. Um, this model is by GW. It started printing beautifully and then it just stopped printing beautifully. It had a layer shift. I don't know how it got a layer shift, but it ended up getting a layer shift. And that tells me this is the white from Spool 3D. This is their white. Uh, and I'll be honest with you, if I look at this model, which you guys probably can't see the whole thing of, but this was printed in the same filament uh, on the Ender 3, and it came out beautifully. There he is. It's time to end. So this came out actually really nice. This, on the other hand, started out nice, but didn't finish nice. So at the end of the day, do I think it's... Do I think that this is going to handle... At the end of the day, do I think this is going to handle other filaments very well? I don't think so. We have a shark that I just printed this morning, and it came out beautiful. I printed it in the gold filament um, that, you know, they recommend. And in all honesty, it is what it is. Um, so if you use their filament, you may get very good results. If you don't use their filament, the proof is in the, the pudding. Uh, you may not get good results at all. Let's take a closer look at the 3D printer. Okay, so this is the shark that we printed this morning with the uh, gold filament from Dremel. Um, you can see that it has a very nice touch screen here. Uh, very responsive, easy to use. It has everything that you need in it. The build plate is removable by pulling these little clips you can remove the build plate. So you can bring the build plate out and uh, take your model off. And the build plate does go back in fairly easily. So snap it in, you're, you're done. You do need to put glue on the build plate in order to get anything to stick. Um, in the plus column, it was very easy to level. Um, you, it walks you through and it tells you what knob to turn to level. There's only two knobs for leveling. You can see here, there's one, and over on the other side is the other one. Uh, you do want to wait for the machine to completely cool down before taking your print off the bed. Otherwise, you could end up doing some damage to the glass. Um, it has The top opens, the front opens. So it does sit there. Now, I don't have this on a level surface at the moment, but it, it does sit there and uh, you want to make sure that all of the doors are closed before you print or you'll get an error message saying that the door is open. You can still print with the doors open, but it, uh, it doesn't do very well. Now, um, let's get a closer look at the extruder assembly and um, we'll talk a little bit about how that works. So here we can see how the extruder assembly is set up. It is all enclosed. It uh, has a lever here to remove your filament. Now, the way that this works is when you're changing filament, you cut it off right here, and it will extrude the remainder of that filament through your machine, and then it'll tell you to add new filament. Now, it does come in through this little bracket here. Uh, there's a Bowden tube, as you can see right down here in the uh, bottom uh, left-hand corner of your screen, 
it comes out of that Bowden tube through this little clip and is kind of tight going in there. But uh, on the plus side, they do have a little metal grommet around there, so it's easy to, um, I guess, flow through the machine. Um, it has a ribbon cable. This machine is not easily serviceable. Uh, if you were to try and service it yourself, it is pretty tough to do. Um, I'm, it's my understanding that the Dremel DigiLab has to be sent back to Dremel for any customer service. Uh, with the exception of replacing clips on the bed, the rest of this machine is not serviceable. Now, it does have an onboard camera, which we did not test out, so I can't really speak to how well that is. Uh, it comes with uh, USB and Ethernet uh, ports uh, built into it. It has a fan. Well, let me just move that out of the way. You can see down here it's got a fan that uh, expels your air. You can print pretty much uh, any material through this machine. On the downside of this machine, on the downside of this machine, it is all made from injected molded plastic. There's no real metal parts on this other than the rails and the things that have to be made from metal. Is this a machine that I would run out at a $1,799 price point um, in the US? Probably not. Um, do I think the machine's built well? Not really. I've got it on this mat and I have two feet that are not centered on the mat. So the whole frame now is twisted. That's why the door will not latch closed. Uh, if I were to put it, take this mat out from underneath and of course leave it on the table, that door would close. So it's a must that this be on a very flat surface. Um, if you're not going to have it on a flat surface, at the end of the day, is it worth the $1,799 price tag? I don't think so. At, for me, um, just purely looking at price, this is not a printer I would buy anytime soon. Convenience-wise, if I was just in the market for something that would work for me right out of the, out of the box and I, I don't have to do really anything to it, then yes, it would be a printer that I would consider uh, purchasing at $17.99. Now, Dremel is trying to get into the new makerspace, as it were. And in the new makerspace, we have different tools than we had 10, 15 years ago. If you were a carpenter, you had carpentry tools. If you were a metal fabricator, you had welding tools and metal fabrication tools. Um, if you were a, a model maker, you had lots of plastic bits around. Um, these are just some examples of things that Dremel is trying to get into with their products. Uh, in this product line, it's fairly light printer because it is all plastic. Um, it does have a heated bed, so that's definitely a plus for this. But at the end of the day, is it a printer that is worth my hard-earned money? I can't say yes. Um, they're Laser, on the other hand, their desktop laser that they're offering now for, I believe, $6,000 US, um, seems to be a very good product. It works well. Companies are using it both in uh, a hobby aspect and in an industrial aspect or a light industrial aspect. This is not a machine I would use in a light industrial uh, setting just because of the way that it is constructed. And the fact that if you're not using their filament, you may not get the results that you're looking for. Um, so at the end of the day, it's not my cup of tea, but uh, is it a solidly built machine? Sure, I'll give it that. It is solidly built. It has very simple, easy to use interface. It's easy to level the bed. I'm not gonna go through all that with you. Um, I've had this now for a couple of weeks. This is going back to Dremel. This episode is not sponsored by Dremel. Um, so this is not something I get to keep. Uh, this is going back to them next week. And uh, it's been interesting playing with it. We haven't tested out the ethernet on it. Uh, just because I didn't feel that I needed to. Uh, if you're going to put it into a networked environment, that might be something you want to do. Might, if that's the kind of printer you're looking for, maybe this is the right printer for you. Um, if it's something you want that's ease of use, um, very intuitive, 
able to connect to your home network, this might be the printer for you. Um, but other than that, I think that uh, this is not, in my opinion, this is not a winner, winner for them. Um, it's got some cool stuff on it, but it's not stuff I regularly use. Um, so there we go. Let's leave it at that. Uh, if you're interested in getting one of these, certainly go ahead and check out Dremel's website. We'll leave a link down below. You can go to their website and get more information about this product. Um, so that's my look at the Dremel DigiLab uh, 3D45. Again, go ahead and look, check out that link below. Let's thank a few people. Uh, first and foremost, we want to thank Spool 3D for the space that they allow us to use here each and every week. Um, thank you to them for allowing us to use this space and giving us access to products that they have in their showroom and in their uh, parts area. And we'll be bringing you more stuff from their showroom and parts area. Remember, if you're looking for printers, parts or accessories, check out spool3d.ca, print it right, print it with Spool 3D. Uh, I want to thank my staff who's not here today. Uh, I'm all by myself, but that's okay. I can handle things some days by myself. Um, they are off doing their own adventures today, and uh, I hope they're having a great time. So let's thank Brian and Jess uh, both for uh, all the work that they do behind the scenes. And let's thank you for tuning in today and having a look at this DigiLab Dremel 3D printer with me. Um, go check it out on their website. Go to Digi, or Dremel, uh, digilab.com. I'll leave the link down below. I can't remember exactly what it is. Um, I'll put a little pros and cons uh, just before the end of this. Thanks to all my Patreons for supporting me uh, during a, a rough time when I broke my hand and we're back to painting um, again. So uh, I hope you guys are enjoying those, those particular episodes on painting Superman. We're getting very close to uh, getting to the base where we're going to do some metallics. Um, what else? Who else do I want to thank? I just want to thank you guys in general for tuning in, checking out the DigiLab, checking out Spool 3D, and checking out this guy on the first layer. My name is Richard Cleveland. I want to thank you again, and you guys go ahead, have yourselves a great day. Enjoy the rest of Wednesday. I hope the weather is nice wherever you are. Say something nice to somebody near you. And uh, until next time, remember that the first layer is always your foundation to a great print.